much. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to a special U.S. Olympic edition of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Last month, we proudly watched as American athletes excelled in their sports at the Summer Olympics in Sydney. And tonight and Tuesday night, the pressure is on them to compete again, this time in a completely different environment, our hot seat. They've joined us and have graciously agreed to donate half their winnings to their favorite charities. We're honored that they're with us tonight. And let's meet them now. They are Stacy Dragila, pole vault. Jenny Thompson, swimming. Maurice Green, track and field. Gary Hall, Jr., swimming. Julie Howdy, soccer. Laura Wilkinson, diving. Dara Torres, swimming. Lenny Kraselberg, swimming. Rulin Gardner, wrestling. And Lisa Leslie, basketball. Yes, congratulations on a wonderful job this summer. Thank you very much for joining us uh, tonight. So here we have 10 of the most agile and talented athletes in the world. Let's see how they do on their first fastest finger question tonight. And here it is. With these sports movies in order of their first theatrical release, starting with the earliest. Remember the Titans, the Bad News Bears, Varsity Blues, the Mighty Ducks. Okay, everybody, time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order. Starting with the earliest and the Bad News Bears. Then the Mighty Ducks. Then Varsity Blues. Finally, remember the Titans. Who got it right on the fastest time? Only one. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Way to go. Come on, let's play. So it's it's the wrestler who gets into the hot seat, the first one out of the box. Nine others can't believe it, but here you are. <laughs> Roland Gardner from uh, Afton, Wyoming. And what a thrill it was to see you take on that big, oh, that Russian guy was scary. Karelin? Alexander yeah. Karelin. Yes, and you, you beat him, and it was one of the biggest upsets in Olympic history. Yeah, Were you nervous correct. going into that because you had wrestled him before? Yeah, I wasn't too nervous. I kind of walked in, I knew what I had to do, and stayed focused in what I was going to go out there and try to accomplish. And... I knew I had a shot, but it was, you know, this guy hadn't been scored on in 10 years. That's right. So. That's right. So what did you do differently to beat him this time? Just got him tired and then just worked my game plan and got him tired. Well, he's old, isn't he? He's about 85 years old. <laughs> he, he, he looks older. He was the oldest Russian in the whole Olympics. <laughs> he's 33 years old. 33. He looks a lot old. Yeah. He's, you... he's I guess, aged well. So, <laughs> But he's, he's a big man and he's a strong man and he's just incredible. Did he talk to you after you beat him? He told me congratulations, and then right as the match was getting over, he said something in Russian. We don't want to know. We don't want to know. Well, anyway, your, your lovely wife is here. Stacy, it's nice to see you. Look nice what happened to you, you Roland. Did you get lucky here? <laughs> <laughs> Way better looking than that Russian guy. Yeah. <laughs> nice to have you here, Stacy. And there's your training partner, Kerry. Nice to have you here. He's the freestyle Olympic uh, He's an Olympic wrestler. I'm the Greco Olympic wrestler. I got you. He took, what'd you take? Fifth? Should have should have won it. But, Came uh, in fifth. Yeah. And so once in a while you do, you guys get on the mat yeah. and work out several moves. Yeah, nice to have you two here. Thank you. Congratulations. Two, two official matches. He's uh, two and zero oh against me. I no kidding. I hadn't beat him in the official match yet, so I'm waiting. All right. Well, let's see how well you do here right now, okay? You know the rules, Rulin? You know about the lifelines? You're 50 questions away from winning $1 million. And once you reach the $1,000 or the $32,000 level, you're guaranteed to leave here with that much money. Uh, to help you win, you have three lifelines, 50-50. Ask the audience, and you can phone a friend. Ready to play? Everybody ready? Let's do it. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Here it is, Roland, for $100. Which of the following terms is slang for very tall and thin, just like yourself? Baldy, muscle-bound, all legs, munchkin. Well, um, I don't think it could be uh, A. And then B, I think, is me. And then D is somebody else I know. But uh, I think it'll be uh, C. 
Yes, you're right, all legs, very tall, very thin. $200. According to a common phrase, a person continuing a conversation or task is keeping the ball what? On offense, dribbling, rolling, in a safety deposit box. Well, I think I'll have to go with C on that. Rolling the right answer for 200. <laughs> Rolling on fire. <laughs> Going for 300. Which of the following people would most likely use a crystal ball at work? A pro bowler, fortune teller, pharmacist, wealthy juggler. <laughs> I'll have to go with that. B. Yes, it's a fortune teller uses that crystal ball. $500. What phrase describes a country or region where dangerous political situations are likely? Cold War, fast track, thin ice, hot spot. I think it'd be a hot spot, D. Right, hot spot, right answer. <laughs> Ruling up to $1,000. What is the nickname of the 2000 Olympic gold medalist swimmer, Ian Thorpe? Is it Thorpedo? Thorpeneda? Mighty Thorpe? Thorpey? Um, actually, that's a, that's a pretty good question. Uh, I, don't, I don't think... Uh, um, okay, I think I'll... Uh, I don't think it's C, and then... Uh, I'm, uh, I don't think it's B, and I don't think it's D, so I'd have to go with uh, A. Right, final answer? Yes. Yeah, he figured that one out. He got $1,000. We'll take a break. When we come back, he goes for $2,000. It's a wonderful scene right after you uh, you beat the uh, the big Russian there. But did you have to go into gymnastics too? <laughs> well, it's kind of a funny story. Everybody else in the tournament was doing backflips, uh -huh. and me being a big guy like I am, I didn't think I could actually finish one of those off. I probably hurt myself on the <laughs> way, so I kind of said, oh, "I'll do a little cartwheel" because everybody mocks me how pretty my cartwheels are. So I yeah. did a cartwheel and a front roll. Now, what, who are you playing for? What charity? Generations Foundation. What do they do? It's basically uh, youth leadership and. I guess the ability for them to uh, achieve more than they thought possible above and beyond the call of being just a regular youth. They want to go out there and get you involved in the, I guess, in the community, help out with different uh, leadership events. Uh huh. Generations Foundation. That's the kids correct. for like from 13 to 18. That's correct. Terrific. All right, Roland. Well, listen, you're doing fine here. You've won $1,000. You're 10 away from the million. Let's do it. Let's play. Here we go. Here it is for $2,000. In what U.S. city did the popular grunge musical style emerge in the early 1990s? Cleveland, Ohio, New York City, Seattle, Washington, San Francisco, California. C, Seattle, Washington. Final? Final. Seattle, the right answer, yeah. Who knows his grunge? You a pretty good dancer, too, are you? No. Oh. $4,000. Which of the following colors is not found on the interlocking rings on the Olympic flag? Blue, black, green, orange. Not found. Probably saw that Olympic flag every day, right? I did. I'm just going through my mental uh, picture. Think, Roland, think. Figure out which one was in there. Oh, it's a pretty good question. I guess you got to study uh, what's being asked. <laughs> A lot of coughing going on here. I think, well, it's kind of the temperature and it's a little cool. So. Yes, I know. Then I just. So, well, um, I remember blue. I think I, re you know, you get up here and you think you remember what color it is, but I think I remember blue, black, I'm pretty sure, and then I definitely know green is. So I think it would have to be D. Orange? Orange. Final? Yes. Got it for $4,000.
Left to right, it was blue, yellow, black, green, and red, and that took up the colors of the Olympic flag. Okay, $8,000, here we go. What is the term for the fibrous tissues that connect bone to bone at the joint? Fats, ligaments, nephrons, muscles. Well, um, actually, I should really know this one real easy since I graduated in uh, physical education, so, and everybody knows that. I know it's not A, and then I'm pretty sure it's not uh, C, but... Uh, bone to bone at the joint. Bone to bone. I think I'll have to go with... Uh, <laughs> B. I wonder what ever gave you that idea. Final answer, Roland. That's, that's yes, fine. you got it right for $8,000. He's going for 16 right now. In the TV special, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, what animal does the Grinch use to pull his sled? Dog, cat, gopher, mouse. Well, I'm pretty sure it's not a cat. I don't think it's a gopher. And then, pretty sure it's not a mouse. It's the, actually, I think it's the dog that puts the little antlers on, so mm -hmm. he's pretty cute. So I think I'll have to go with a dog. Make that your final answer? Yes. Nice sweet. Uh, yeah, and you got it right for $16,000, Roland. <laughs> he has not used a lifeline yet. He's six away from a million, going for $32,000, and here it is. In which of the following sports would an athlete most likely perform a sukahara? Swimming, gymnastics, ice skating, Equestrian. Well, let me go. Uh, I think I'm going to ask the audience. Want to ask the audience? We need some help for Rula. If you're ready, on your keypads using A, B, C, or D, vote now. Well, 45% feel it's gymnastics, and then almost 30% say ice skating. Well, I guess you only live once, so... Well, you still have two lifelines if you're not yeah. sure. Well, I, I don't know if they know back uh, in Wyoming where I'm from on the <laughs> gymnastics. I've never heard of it, and it's... I kind of follow the sports pretty good, but I don't know... You can always terminology. narrow it down by two and see if... Uh, well, I'm gonna have some Whatever fun. you like to do. I'm gonna have some fun, and uh, I'm gonna go with B. Make it That's your final answer. What do you know? The audience knew it. Got it. $32,000. We'll be right back. The rule-out is going for 64000 <laughs> Rule and Gardner are very first to look at athlete in the hot seat tonight, already up to uh, 32000 which he has won. Got to split this with his charity. Going for 64000 just five away from a million. Wouldn't it be great if you won the million dollars? I'd love it. Absolutely. Stacy, how are you doing back there? Pretty good. Yeah? What do you do, Stacy? I'm a school teacher. School teacher in Afton? No, in Colorado Springs, Colorado, ah. at the New Horizons School. Good for you. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and Carrie, what do you do for a living? I'm currently an assistant wrestling coach at Lehigh University in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Good for you. Terrific. <laughs> Now, you know, uh, a lot of these Olympic athletes have to give up all kinds of jobs so that they can uh, go into training. I mean, extensive, intensive training, right? Oh, yeah. We train, uh, most of us train six times a week, and that's what we do as our basic job. So some of them have the opportunity to work, but it's rather difficult to work and try to financially make it. What are you going to do now? Well, my plans are, as the Worlds are in uh, New York City next year, I'm going to plan on continuing to go through the next few years, and hopefully if my body holds up, I'll uh, make it to Greece in 2004. Oh, good for you. You'll go back. Well, that's wonderful. No eyes to become a professional wrestler. I've been contacted. Uh -huh. Aha, so. here it comes. Rule on the scary. <laughs> All right. You want 32,000. We're going for 64,000. Still have two lifelines. Let's play, Roland. Here we go again. In 
the 1960s novel To Kill a Mockingbird, what is the nickname of Atticus Finch's daughter? Is it Jem, Dill, Scout, Mayella? Well, this is a real good question. Um, I think I'm going to have to uh, phone a friend. What do you want to call? Well, I think I want to call... Uh, Somebody who's a good uh, literary person. He yeah, reads a I lot hope, of books. I hope so. Um, we call Mark West. What does Mark do? He is a dentist. All right, fine. Let's give Mark a phone call and see if uh, he can help us out here. Is he your dentist? Hello. Hello, Mark. Yes. Regis Philbin calling from ABC who wants to be a millionaire. How you doing? Good. How you doing, Regis? You're out there in Wyoming? Out there in Wyoming. Well, we've got Rulin here in New York, and he's got a cavity. He does? Nah, I'm only kidding. He's got a problem, though. He's going for $64,000 right now, and he's calling on you for some help. Okay. All right, so he'll come on the line and read the question of the four answers. Uh, you've got uh, 30 seconds, Rulin, and they start right now. In 1960, novel, in the 1960 novel, To Kill a Mockingbird, Kill what Mockingbird. is the nickname of the antiques? Finch's daughter. A. Jim, daughter. B, Dill, C, Scout, or D, Melee. Melee, Scout. Mayela. Scout. It's definitely Scout. Okay, that's one hundred percent sure. Finch's daughter is Scout C, correct? Correct. Okay. Scout. Thank you. Kill him, buddy. Kill him. <laughs> Take it easy, Mark. <laughs> I'm the closest one to him. Well, he seemed very sure about that. I was hoping so. Your final answer? We'll go with C. Final answer, Scott. Let's see what he knows here. Oh, my gosh. Can... Yes, he got it right. $64,000. We're going for 100 Would it be something if he won a million dollars? I can't believe it. <laughs> no, no offense intended. None taken. Nah, good. Four away, though, from a million, one lifeline left. Here it is for $125,000. Which of the following actors does not appear in the 1986 film Top Gun? Meg Ryan, Tim Robbins, Anthony Edwards, Carrie Elways. Love the movie. I just don't know everybody's names in the movie. I don't see Tom Cruise's name up there, so I was hoping he. Uh, That'd his be name too would be easy, up there. right? Yeah, it would be. So uh, twenty-five thousand dollars. What do you want? <laughs> they could give me. Um, let me go with. Uh, you can narrow it down by two if this is strictly a guess. I think I'm going to do that. Go with fifty-fifty. Why don't we do that, computer? Take away two of those wrong answers, please. If you miss, you'll go back to thirty-two thousand walk now at 64,000 it's between Tim Robbins and Gary Elways well I really have no idea but uh, you come on the show you take a chance and uh, you might as well go for it I'll go with that uh... not in the movie I'll go with D not in the movie D Gary Elways final answer final answer you just won 125 Lifelines are all gone right now, but he's just three away from a million, going for $250,000. And here it is. Which of the following nations does not belong to the region known as the Balkans? Hungary, Macedonia, Bulgaria, Albania. go over it for you now. You lose 93,000 if you miss, quarter million if you win, 125,000 if you choose to leave now. Wish my wife was up here. She uh, does geography, so. She's nodding yes. Even Kerry knows what the answer is. <laughs> um, wow, this is a good question too. 
Well, let's take them one at a time. Hungary and the Balkans. Macedonia. Bulgaria. Albania. Well. Oh. I guess you're not supposed to be greedy, so. Be happy with what I got, so I'm gonna stop there. All right, fine. You go to walk from here. The good decision, I think. Well, why, don't you, why don't you make a guess? Tell you what. Uh, why don't you guess? B. You would have guessed Macedonia. No, it would have been Hungary. <laughs> they did the right thing. Congratulations, my man. <laughs> good going, little India. Nice to have you here. Right on. to kick off our U.S. Olympic shows. That's a lot of money for two very deserving causes, Rulin and the Generations Foundation. And good luck to both of them. But now the games continue. So here's the next fastest finger question. Here it comes. Put these artists in the order they won a Best New Artist Grammy, starting with the most recent. Carly Simon, Sheena Easton, The Beatles, Lauren Hill. Time's up. Let's see that answer in the correct order, starting with the most recent artist, Lauren Hill, then Sheena Easton, then Carly Simon, then the Beatles. All right, who got it in the fastest time? The winner is Laura Wilkinson. <laughs> Laura Wilkinson right here. Congratulations. That's wonderful. Pretty Laura Wilkinson. Gonna go for that million dollars when we come back. Very pretty. Love your curly hair. Thank you. Didn't notice it during the Olympics. <laughs> Look a little bit like Sarah Jessica Parker. No, <laughs> thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. You're single? <laughs> no, actually. I'm taken. You're not single? No. You're married? No, I have a boyfriend. Oh, you have a boyfriend? Yeah. Oh, nothing permanent so far. <laughs> just want to give all the guys hope out there. <laughs> So tell me about your life. You go to the University of Texas? Yeah, I'm, I took a year off to train, and I'm going back in January. What are you studying? Public relations. Public relations. Yes. Good for you. Okay. And you're accompanied by your friend, uh, Jenna Christensen. Hi, Jenna. Hi, how, how are you How you doing? doing? Nice to see you. So the last uh, dive that you did, or was it the last dive? It was, what, a two-and-a-half tuck somersault? My third dive. My third, third dive. Yeah. How difficult is that? As difficult as it sounds? It's, it's actually the easiest dive on my list, um, but I just happened to do it really well. <laughs> Didn't know how you did until you got in the water, right? Right. Yeah. Well, you did it just fine. And Laura, we're very proud of you, and thank you for joining us tonight. You know the rules. You know about uh, the lifelines, 50-50. Ask the audience, phone a friend. It's all here for you. So if you're ready, Laura Wilkinson, let's do it. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> Going for $100. What is the person most likely using if he says he's paying with plastic? Credit card, pennies, wampum, silly putty. I think I know this one. It's a credit card. Credit card, playing with plastic. You got it right. $200. What sport sanctions the use of a jab, hook, or uppercut? Skateboarding, ice hockey, boxing, ballet. I think I know this one too. It's C, boxing. That's what they do in boxing, yeah. $300. Which of these foods would most likely be made into jam? Potatoes, blueberries, roast beef, spaghetti. I think the one I would most enjoy would be, be blueberries. <laughs> You're right, blueberries. They don't do it with, with spaghetti, do they? Here it is for $500. In billiards, what substance is commonly applied to the tip of a pool cue? Water, sand, Flour, chalk. I have a lot of friends that love to play pool, and I know that's the chalk. Chalk is what they use. You're right, Laura. We got $500.
He's up to $1,000. The pilgrims who landed on Plymouth Rock in 1620 came from what country? England, France, Spain, Germany. Pretty sure the pilgrims came from England. Um, they were fighting for for religious freedom and other freedoms. Um, pretty sure that's a England. <laughs> sure enough to make it your final yes. answer? Yes, you're right. For a thousand dollars, they came from England. <laughs> She's up to two thousand dollars. Who, say, who served as manager of the 2000 U.S. Olympic baseball team? Frank Robinson, Whitey Herzog, Sparky Anderson, Tommy Lasorda. Um, oh, goodness. Don't know much about the baseball team that was there. <laughs> um, I think the... <laughs> There's a whole epidemic going on around here. Final answer? Yes. Tommy Lasorda, yeah, you got it. <laughs> She's up to 4,000. On the TV series Sesame Street, what color is the cookie monster? <laughs> Green, red, blue, purple. He's blue, I love that show at sea. <laughs> you don't still watch it, do you? No, no, I don't. Blue, final answer? Yes. Got that one, too, for $4,000. 8,000, <laughs> here we go. Which of the following species is most closely related to the wallaby? Ostrich, kangaroo, lemur, perch. Oh, gosh. See any wallabies while you were over there? <laughs> no. <laughs> Hmm. I, I should probably know this coming from Australia. Um, I think it's B, kangaroo. Kangaroo, final? Yes. That's it, the kangaroo. The <laughs> Going to 16,000 right now. Percussionist Sheila E. is best known for singing and touring with what performer? Paul Simon, Sting, Prince, <clears throat> Carlos Santana. I should have brushed up on my trivia before I came here. Um, Sheila E. I think it's C, Prince. Prince, yeah. final? Yes. Yes, it's Prince for 16. <laughs> you know, she has all of her lifelines left and just six away from a million going for $32,000. The lead character in John LaCar's novels is involved in what? Espionage, gambling, medicine, law. Oh the reading I've been doing has been more Harry Potter <laughs> books lately. Um, well, you've got the lifelines. Yes, I think I'm going to go for the audience. Audience, fine. We need a little help here for Laura. On your keypads, using A, B, C, or D, please vote now. Well, 84% espionage. I, I think I'm going to trust that percentage. I'm going to go with A, espionage. She's going with the audience. Final answer. Final answer. Yes, Laurie, you got $32,000. We'll take a break. When we get back, she goes for $64,000. Playing with some of our great Olympic athletes tonight, having a lot of fun with them too. Laura Wilkinson from Houston, Texas, in the uh, hot seat right now. Which charity are you playing for? The Shriners Hospital. The Shriners Hospital, yeah, they've been around for years helping mm -hmm. kids with burns. Good for you. Thanks. It's a wonderful organization. All right, we're in serious money now. We're going for 64,000, five away from a million. Just two lifelines left. Let's go back to it. Let's play. $64,000. What geological wonder was renamed Uluru in deference to the region's native inhabitants? Victoria Falls, 
Ayers Rock, K2, Painted Desert, Uluru. I think I'm gonna have to use a lifeline. I would like to call a friend. Sure, who do you want to call? My Uncle Jim. Okay, let's get Uncle Jim on the phone, AT&T. Hello? Hello, Jim. Yes? Regis Philbin calling from New York City. How are you? Well, I'm fine. How are you? Good. I got your beautiful niece here, Laura. Ah, uh, she's great, isn't she? Yeah, she is great, but she needs your help. She's, she's going trouble. for 64000 right now, and she's going to come on and read you the question and the four answers, and one of them's the right answer, okay? Okay. All right, Jim, good luck. All yours, Laura. 30 seconds right now. Okay, Jim. What geological wonder was renamed Uluru in deference to the region's native inhabitants? It's A, Victoria Falls, B, Ayers Rock, C, K2, or D, Painted Desert? Uh, I believe that's Ayers Rock. Okay, are you sure about that? I'd say 75% uh, sure. All right. Thank you, Jim. Good luck, Jim. Thanks. Seventy-five percent is better than nothing. I trust him. I, I'll go with B. That's my uh, final answer. Ayers Rock, final answer. <laughs> Got it for sixty-four thousand. <laughs> Just one lifeline left now, but she's going for one hundred and twenty-five thousand and four away from the million. And here it is. What musician provides singing commentary throughout the nineteen ninety-eight movie There's Something About Mary? Tom Waits, Elliot Smith, Lou Reed, Jonathan Richmond. I've seen that movie. I thought it was hilarious, but I don't know who is doing the singing commentary. I'll have to use a 50-50. Why don't we narrow it down by two, computer? Thanks. Elliot Smith, Jonathan Richmond. Either of those names ring a bell, Laura? I, I don't even have a a hint of a clue, so I think I'm going to stay with the 64,000. Why do we do that? 64,000, a nice sum for you and the Shriners Hospital. And thank you very much for coming by and playing with us. Good luck to you. Thank nice you. to have you here, Laura. Right on Facebook. Yeah, the correct answer was Jonathan to Richmond, but she's a delightful young lady, very sweet. Good luck to her. Now we have an empty hot seat, so here's the next fastest finger question. Put these U.S. historical events in chronological order, starting with the earliest. The Great Depression, the Revolutionary War, Columbus finds America, Persian Gulf War. Okay, everybody's finished here. Let's see that answer in the correct order, starting with the earliest event, Columbus finds America, then the Revolutionary War, the Great Depression, finally the Persian Gulf War, who got it in the fastest time? The winner is uh, Lenny Rizzober. Lenny, here you go. My man got it here. We'll be right back. Lenny's going for $1 million when we come back. All right. There you go. Lenny Kraselberg from Los Angeles. I'm sure many of you know by now that Lenny was born in Odessa, Russia. Parents came here with you in, uh, back in 1989. And they didn't speak any English, did they, Lenny? No, they didn't speak any English. I didn't speak any English. You knew a few of the words, right? A few of the words, but I definitely could not have a conversation. Was it tough for you to... Uh, first right. few years, so sure. it was definitely tough. But you began swimming in, in uh, the Ukraine. That's right. I started when I was five years old. Uh-huh. And then what, what did you do? How did you meet your, your coaches and the people who helped you get ready for the Olympics here in this country? Well, once I got here, two weeks into it, my dad was really serious about me finding a team, and we found the team. And actually, my, my, like my second career, I guess, didn't start till I started at a junior college then, and then went on to USC and worked with Mark Schubert for the past six yeah. years. USC's got a great swimming program, don't they? We do they? have a good program. Terrific, Lenny. Well, we're, we're so proud of you, and of course, you are one of the 50 most beautiful people in the world from People magazine. Again, they left me out, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't forget things like that, Lenny. You know that. All right, Lenny, you saw what happened to your, your teammates. What do you think? Can you beat them? I eh? hope so. The big There's wrestler and, the, and the diver? Sure you can. All right, let's try it. You know the rules. You know the lifelines. 
Uh, so let's play. Why don't we do it? Who wants to be a millionaire? Lady Kraselberg does. Very good. One hundred dollars, Lenny. Which of these phrases is commonly used to describe a very close race between two competitors? Leg and leg, neck and neck, arm and arm, spleen and spleen. I have to say B. Yeah, that's a close race when you're neck and neck with somebody. Two hundred dollars. The beginner's hill at a ski area, commonly called what? Chicken Ridge, Turkey Bump, Bunny Slope, Lawsuit Lane. You ski, Lenny? No, never done. I swim. But I would have to go see. Yeah, that's where you start, Lenny. You want $200. He's up to $300. Someone with well-defined stomach muscles is said to have what kind of abs? Hardwood, washboard, countertop, Regis Lake. <laughs> say the right thing, Lenny. I want to say D, but I'm not. But going to. you're not sure, so you want to make it. Uh, I'll say B. Washboard, the right answer. Yeah, those are the kind of abs we all want. Lenny Kraselberg going for $500. If a person is superficially reading a page or paragraph, he's said to be doing what? Skimming, skating, surfing, scoring. A, skimming. That's what he's doing, he's skimming. <laughs> Lenny, you're up to $1,000. In which of the following sports would you perform a gainer? Would it be in basketball, high jump, wrestling, Diving, a gamer. <laughs> uh, well, I know it's not basketball. It's not... D, diving. Final. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it finally came to Lenny, diving. That sound means that we're out of time for tonight, but Lenny will be back here next time. Joining him will be our remaining U.S. Olympic medalists. And they are Stacey Dragila, Maurice Green, Julie Hovey, Dara Torres, Lisa Leslie, Gary Hall Jr., and Jenny Thompson. From New York, everybody.